You are now listening to Random Ramblings with Rob. Yay! Yay! <laughs> yeah! Motherfuckers. everybody this your boy b rob and i'm back with another edition of the random realms with rob podcast first and foremost i'd like to thank you the listener for coming back each and every week or however you listen to podcast if you're a first time listener i'd like to thank you all so much for giving my show a try and if anybody recommended you to me go ahead and uh, give them a crisp high five but do so safely because we're still somewhat in a pandemic so make sure you sanitize before and after and um, maintain that uh, appropriate three to six feet afterwards. But if you want to remain safe and socially conscious, you can take your social media app of choice and you can send them a well-crafted DM saying thank you for recommending you to me. Speaking of social media, you can find the Random Ramblings with Rob on various social media platforms to include Twitter at 3R Show, Instagram at the. 3R Show. You can find this very interview that you're listening to in video form on YouTube by searching 3R Show. And for anything that I may have forgotten to mention, you can find it all on randomrob.com to where for the rest of the month of March, you can uh, get some discounts on merchandise and everything like that. So um, with that being said, as I record this, it is 7 a.m. on March 28th. So um, about, what, a couple hours from now? Not a couple, it's more than a couple. Several hours from now will be uh, March 29th, which is my birthday. I will be another year older. I will be roaming this earth another year longer getting a little bit of wisdom and insight into this thing that we call life. And uh, the last year has been pretty crazy, pretty tricky uh, with everything that's been going on and whatnot. Had a couple of health issues within this past year, non-COVID related, just, you know, normal wear and tear and life shit, man. Um, So, yeah, I'm just happy to be here another year. And um, I'm looking forward to what the next year has in store. Speaking of what we have in store is I have another interview for you here. Uh, Joining me is Al Mega, CEO and curator of uh, Comic Crusaders. Crusaders, Crusaders. I I, got to throw that R in there because I'm like I'm saying Crusaders, (laughs) like Crustables. That's what I'm saying. You know, the little peanut butter bread joints, the fucking Crustables. But nah, uh, I get to talk with him or whatever. And this is another cat that damn, um, I want to know people. You know what I'm saying? It's just like we have all these hollowed interactions with each other on social media. And, um, you know, if you are a podcaster or anybody that deals with, uh, you know, just working with social media, you know that sometimes you have those hollow interactions. Somebody follows you, you follow them back. They retweet your thing, you retweet their thing, you know, out of courtesy and everything. But I wanted a little more. I see this logo for Comic Crusaders on Twitter. And, you know, they always retweet my stuff. I see them in um, the little retweet groups that we be in and everything, exchanging DMs and stuff. But I wanted to get to who was running the asylum because we all crazy down here, you know. So um, I reached out and um, I got my man Al Mega who is joining me today and we talk about a whole bunch of things. And 
we need to circle back around too because um <laughs> I got to retract some of my words. I got to I got to eat some things that I have said. You know how I feel about the Undertaker. Well, previously. You know, I, I don't harbor those feelings so much anymore. And you know how you know bad I was mouthing off about the guy. I was doing the same thing about the Snyder cut of the Justice League movie. Well, it has been released finally. So now we ain't got to keep talking about this shit other than in review, in hindsight. Not as much as we were doing before. But um, I've watched it twice now. And I've watched the original. And uh, if you want to get some more insight into that, you can listen to um, not the latest edition of the Cult 45 podcast, but we have a side-eyed side quest edition of the Cult 45 podcast. And we all talk about the uh, Snyder Cut of the Justice League film. I, I say that to say this. It was a good movie in comparison to the original. But uh, it was a, a pretty good movie. And I talked all that shit about it, said it was going to be a flop and all those negative things I said. But I finally put eyeballs on it all four hours and two minutes of it. And I enjoyed it. I really did. I enjoyed it enough for me to watch it twice. Might even watch it a third time. <laughs> but um, it was an enjoyable movie. And um, my man Al Mega was here. And he, um, he wanted to go back after it was all said and done. Because I talked plenty of shit about it in this episode. And uh, we wanted to do a review. So um, I know I jumped the gun a little bit, Al. But um, I'm still down to come over. And we can still discuss it. Because I got more things in in the dome piece here that I want to say about that movie, you know, some things that were omitted from the Colt 45 edition of the show. So, yeah, man, I I, I got to get back with Almega and you'll see kind of, you know, a little bit of the chemistry that we occurred here in this interview. Um some of his uh journeys in life to brought him down to Florida and whatnot from New York and just a whole bunch of other random things. Matter of fact, we sp- before we even really got into this interview, we spoke for like 20 something minutes prior to this before the actual recording, what you're going to hear here starts. And then if you're looking at the video edition or if you go back to look at the video edition, there's more video with audio than there is in this podcast. So if you want more, a little bit of uh, what we was talking about, you can just head over to YouTube and get the full interview and whatnot. I mean, anyway, that's it. Um, I'm tired as fuck. 7 a.m. Just uh, getting back in the house. And uh, I got to go to sleep so I can get back up and do it all over again. But you can follow me once again on social media at 3R Show on Twitter. At the 3R Show on Instagram. And you can find this video for this episode on YouTube. And everything else, you can go to randomrob.com and you can find some discounts on some merch for the rest of March and many different other ways that you can help support the show. Also, um, you still got time. Monday is uh, my birthday and we're going to do a special edition of the Random Rounds with Rob called Ask Miss B-Rob to where my wife, my wife, comes on the show once a year and she answers all your questions so i'm still trying to figure out if i'm gonna do it live or not and um if if i am i'll figure it out tonight so i can be prepped and everything for it tomorrow so i gotta figure out how to set up the cameras in this bitch and do all kind of other things but as of now you'll get an extra episode this week But um, it remains to be seen if it's going to be video or not. But anyway, uh, check out the sponsor, Hooks, Rubs, and Spices. You can go to hooksrubsandspices.etsy.com. And uh, you can get 15% off your order if you use promo code RANDOM. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Appreciate you for listening. And uh, enjoy this edition of the Random Rounds with Rob podcast featuring Al Mega. Are we doing video? Oh, you want me on video? You tell me, but whatever you want to do. No, you. T-
whatever you're you're most comfortable with. What well, matter with me, bro? I could turn on the video. How? Yeah, why not? I have a nice, a cool background. There we are. I moved to the garage. There's no longer a green screen. I mean, I don't have as cool of a background as you, but at least I got something. This is the garage as well. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> this is where our women kick us out to, bro? Are you married? I, I left. I didn't get kicked out. I left. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, I'm done. Latest. Yeah, that, this is what COVID gave me, you know? I mean, not the actual <laughs> disease, but the, 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 the pandemic, mm. so to speak. Uh, we got into our, you know, we was stuck in the house where she was at first. I mean, I was still going to work because I'm essential. And uh, we was just in the house together all the time. And then she got mad at me and I got mad at her. And I just went in the garage and built a room. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could build a room. I'm just, I mean, you're, you actually built a surrounding for yourself. Yeah, I mean, this is just... Um, Outside of this, these walls is the garage. This room is inside the garage. Oh, that's cool though. I wish I had that. I have to use the garage in general with a foldable table. You know, in case I want to bring, I could just fold and go. <laughs> yeah, because I mean that, that was like you, you said. You wish you could do it. I mean, you can do it because I have no experience at this shit, and it's just I went to school. The <laughs> University of YouTube taught me everything. Oh, oh yes, huh? Oh yeah. Son. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then my, you know. And it was my fault too, because I've said this many times or whatever. It's like, I was fortunate enough to have both parents. I had my dad and my dad knew how to do things. And he tried to teach me how to do the things that he knew how to do. But I did not blame him because I did not learn anything. I put it mm. on myself because I didn't take the time to pay attention. Ah, there you <laughs> So, go. I mean, he built houses and you know, tear a car apart, put it back together. I think he tore it apart initially just to figure out how to put it back together. But <laughs> so he That's did the way you like learned. That. He did That's shit right. like that. And I watched him do it, but I didn't retain enough of it to, you know, just to keep it. And That's nice. Cause my father said that to me growing up because he, he learned to do a lot of things, but by looking, mm -hmm. he goes, just view people. That's why I'm always an observer. And then I try to replicate yeah, because it's just like, you you come in here, here you go, here's the instructions. And I'm like, all right, I, I, think, I, I think I got it. But <laughs> daggone, when you start putting the things in my hands and you show me how to do it, I was like, oh, I got that. Legos. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's how I am with computers, bro. I could tear it apart and put it back together in a heartbeat. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, this is like my first proper PC rig that I have right here. And oh, nice. I, Congrats. I, I did not build this one, but I picked everything that's in it. But when I did the upgrades, that's the part that I did. So I got it, everything stock. And then when I start making the additions and add-ons, that's what I started getting in there and start nice doing things. And, you know, I, I was a little bitch about it. I ain't gonna lie, because some of these require some some rugged man hands, and you gotta like ah, rip yeah. some shit. You and can't just, be scared, bro. Yeah, exactly. Man. I was They're built like, to last. <laughs> I was like, some of the things. I said, man, I just spent like eighteen hundred dollars on all this shit. I ain't gonna be sitting here trying to rip shit and break it or whatever. Because the um, putting the fans in the front, they got a, um, a plastic cover. It got a handle on the bottom. Yeah. You gotta yank that bitch off. There's no screws or nothing. It's like the little clip pins. And I was like, I'm looking on. You're sweating. Like, oh my God, I don't want to break this I shit. Know, I'm, I'm on YouTube trying to find my specific case to see if somebody <laughs> tear it down so I know if I'm doing it right and shit. And I was like, and the guy in the video was like, hey man, you can't, you gotta be rough with it. You gotta, you gotta yank it. And I was like, and a lady, you know? I was like, oh. It's right. not your lady. It's, 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 your, it's a hooker. So might as well just <laughs> get a little rough. It's all right. I was just like, oh. <laughs> Oh, it's not broke. <laughs> excellent, 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 bro. And I like your logo, man. Hot, hot, great looking logo, bro. I always like to, you know, look for things that a podcast or vidcaster does it, and your logo really, really stands out, bro. Which one? I got a whole bunch. The random rock, the random ramblings on the back behind you. Oh, this one. Uh, oh, that one. Uh, behind your right shoulder. This one, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, That's that, a good that one. is since I am in Houston, Texas, that is a knockoff of the Houston Astros logo. Uh, yeah, it's a nice one though. You did a great job with it. I know I need to do more with that. I mean, I mean, yeah, she needs to make some t-shirts and everything. I'm sticking with the OG logo because I made that in my phone. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> this is like I, I, it's no shit. It, it couldn't have came together no more randomer than that 
logo right there came together. The one that's like official for the show. I was playing with this Adobe app and I just typed in the words random rams with Rob, the little skull joint right there. I just put it on there because it's orig the original picture of that skull is um, black and white and red. Okay. And um, matter of fact, this was the original concept for it. Uh, of course, better be on some clothing or oh, not. Oh. Yeah, this is the original logo. Ooh, okay. So this was from 2012, 2013. That's damn many years before I even thought about doing a podcast. Because gotcha. I, I like to, uh, at the time I was really into graphic design and I wanted to make my own shit called Addictive Concepts. Gotcha. So this was the logo that I had and I just, I kept it. And then when it came, I put it in um, Adobe program. I put this in there without the uh, wording on it. And I typed in the random rounds with Rob, how you see my logo. And I just pressed the randomize button. <laughs> That's what it spit out. <laughs> Too funny. And I was just like, oh, then I put the little with Rob on the bottom. And I was like, That's it. I got it. Too funny. A totally random way to do it. It's so funny because one of my team members is called Josh the Random Dude. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got to get on you with Random Rob. And then, you know, it'll be just a random show. <laughs> yeah. You know what? For a time when I first started, because, um, you know, you probably went through it as well. You got, a podcast, a couple of them, and you look for your name, what you're going to call the thing or whatnot. So you get on iTunes or wherever they got podcasts and you just type in that name to see if somebody else has. Yeah. It. So nobody has. Sometimes that doesn't work though, because I came yeah. across a situation where because it's Undercover Case Podcast Network, we have shows on the line. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, Podbean, my host, doesn't mm -hmm. let me allow to break those out individually, you know, yeah. to have its own RSS. So come a few months ago we see somebody use the name outside the panels We're like yo what the fuck you know we have we've been doing this show for fucking massive years already that's yeah. our title well bottom line they got the rss we don't yeah so way we did it okay well we're the original outside the panels all right guys and you got to make sure that when you guys do your show you say you have nothing to do with ucpn because outside the panels is really for much and that's how people know it yeah. So they agreed to do that. Oh, like, okay, so we'll do a disclaimer. See, that's civil. Because, yeah, cause, see, because I let my boy handle it. Yeah. Because I come out with the New York shit real quick. I'm an <laughs> asshole that way. Because I'm like, I, I get livid because, like, do your homework, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I come out I come out my face that way sometimes. When it comes to, listen, I'm not, I'll be nice to everybody. But when you're trying to step on my toes, not, not, now, not, not, not you fucking with my food, then now I'm gonna fuck with you. Like, look here, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, bro, I, I'll come out my, yo, dude, I make my team laugh. That's why they warn me, like in advance, hey, I'll, I'll take care of this problem. Mm. Like, you sure? Like, yeah, 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 I'm sure. <laughs> Not that hey, I make hey, things hey. worse, but, you know, I, I'll make people feel a certain way. And, you know, mm. hey, that's what we gotta do, man. I'm protective. I understand. Yeah, because, yeah, like, um, I looked it up and nobody had that name for That's their beautiful. show. And, um, but the only thing about it is, you know, I think two, three years in, I started, you know, shortening the brand to three R show, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just so happened to get it on Twitter, three R show. Boom. Great. Then, um, I, you know, I just changed cause I didn't have too many other social media, but whatever yeah. I did put it on, I, it was available. So like Twitch and YouTube. You took it all. You know, but when it comes to this motherfucking Instagram, there's ah. a bitch on there that has the 3R show hashtag, uh, you know, account name. Yeah. And has not posted since f September 16th of 2015. And I'm like, what the fuck? So wait, don't, don't the names expire though if they haven't seen login or usage after? Well, see, that, that's the thing about it though. It's just, I, I, DM the account, never heard anything from it. But it, it might be just one of those things that, you know, people make an account just to look at Instagram. You know, they don't post anything. They just have an Instagram so they can look at Instagram. Because I have a TikTok. I don't do no TikToks, but I use it to look at TikTok. You, know? so you don't be ticking and talking, bro? No, nah, I don't be ticking and talking. Uh, yeah, that, that ain't my shit either. I mean, but the thing is, as, as a brand owner, mm -hmm. we have to utilize it. Yeah, I have somehow. It. I have it there. But Me too. I do just like you do. I, listen, what you, I right now we're vibing because what you just did 
for your brand. That's what they tell everybody to do because they don't know what to do. I'm like, secure your fucking name. That should be the fucking first thing you do. Secure your name. You could use secure it everywhere and found the problem. Mm -hmm. But but I'll work on the back end to figure that out for you because I'm pretty sure that that they're probably not using it. I mean, you're gonna send, you see nothing. Yeah, well, you're gonna send little Tony in there, break his legs and shit. <laughs> hey man. Big tone, big tone, not little tone. I sent yeah. a big tone for that one. <laughs> well, I appreciate you upgrading from little to big for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> Hold on. Oh <laughs> we in the club. Yeah, man. Oh, but shit. I mean. 2016 was a humble beginning for me. I mean, where, where did it all start for you? I mean, you, you make the move from up top, you come down bottom, you're following your kid around there, making sure, you know, Big Tony is watching out for you and know? everything. So, yeah. I mean, what, what started this venture in the, the, you know, broadcasting for you? Well, the broadcasting journey was just an extension of Comic Crusaders blog because I wanted Comic Crusaders to be a store. Mm -hmm. All right. But unfortunately, economic time, because this is back in 2006, you know, economy Ooh. tanked for a certain time. Yeah. So that really crushed the dream of the store. But I already had the domain, you know, I did all that. So, you know, wifey sees me like, shit, I don't know what to do with this now. I was like, fuck, I needed a store. Wifey says, hey, why don't you become like the TMZ of comics? Because she noticed one day that uh, I had a hookup in New York at DC. Mm -hmm. And these cat, this cat was getting DC and Marvel Comics in advance of release date. So... I found them on Craigslist, if you believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and we started meeting in the city. So I started, you know, buying bulk. I mean, yo, dude, I would get a stack of books, including an omnibus for like 25 hours. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about books that are not out yet. So I had the scoop on the death of Peter Parker. And I also had the scoop on the death of Damien. Ooh. My ass went ahead and took photos of that and shared it online. When I shared it online, the first one was the uh, Peter Parker. And yo, Marvel somehow got my, my Google number because that's the first thing I did. And they called me. Say, hey, motherfucker. Take that shit down. We got yeah, bigger, straight. we got bigger Tony over here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, there was, he had he had Tone Hoke. Yeah, um, we, got, we got large Tony over here. <laughs> so yeah, they were like, you gotta take that down. I'm like, I will. They're like, take it down. I'll check back in an hour if you haven't taken it down. We, you know, it's gonna get a little bit, you know, worrisome for you. Kind of thing, they were threatening me. You know, but I'm sure I'm new at this. You know, I'm like, all right, I'll take it down. I respect it. Then, you know, they started questioning me. Even Bleeding Cool started questioning me. Oh, did you get the book and this and that? You know? I was like, fuck you, because I never liked Bleeding Cool. Because they were, they were the ones that initially really blew me up. Because Marvel only found out through Bleeding Cool. Because they went through my account and started, oh, look at what Comic Crusaders is doing. They're, they're spoiling the story, although I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. That was the first time. And then I remember Bleeding Cool right here then. I said, these motherfuckers, not a problem. So it comes DC. I had the Damien, you know, remember that the iconic Alex Ross Batman cover where Damien dies? Mm -hmm. Took a picture of that, shared that. And then uh, next thing you know, I had a DC person call me, but not at, through Google or anything. They called my job. Don't ask me. I don't know how they got my job number, honest to God. And, you know, it was the VP at the time of DC. And he's like, yo, you got to take that down. Uh, where did you get that? Oh, I can't give you my sources or nothing like that, but I'll, I'll, I'll take it down. They're like, okay, take it down now, though. I'm like, I'm at work. He said, I don't care. Log in through your phone. Or ask your job. You got to take it down now, and I'm going to stay on hold. <laughs> Dude. I was like, oh, fuck. I asked my boss tonight. You know, yeah, they, they, got, they, got, they got large Tony over there, too. They cross bearing. They be like, Hell yeah, yeah. They, Tony, <laughs> Tony works everywhere, apparently. So... <laughs> You know, once again, it was bleeding cool that had blown that up. I, I go to their website first before I take it down. Like, these motherfuckers, like, why are they, like, on me like this? You know what I mean? And now I'm feeling on top of weight because, you know, this is a, you know, bleeding cool is a white boy-owned company. And here is this little Latino independent trying to do something. Yeah. You know, so now I'm, I'm taking this the wrong way now. Because, you know, that's New York mentality. It's like, okay, bro, it ain't about the news. It's maybe about my color or who I am. Mm -hmm. You know, shitting on me. Whatever, I listened to the dude, took it down. But that helped me later on. Mm -hmm. So then I go home, I told wifey what the fuck I was dealing with, whatever. And she goes, why don't you do a TMZ of comics yourself? Like, be a news, do a news site. All right. You know what? That's not a bad idea, but I don't want to be gossipy like those bitch asses that we did cool. Can't yeah. do that. I don't want to shit on nobody. I want to celebrate the culture instead. So slowly and surely, I started building the site, 
you know, learning, like, just like you said, the school of Google, and YouTube, built the site, and then I was like, okay, I need writers. I can't write all this shit by myself. So I said, I said, okay, I have an idea. So I'm getting access to stuff. So how about if I just do a social thing? Hey, anybody want to be a writer? I can't pay you, but you're going to have advanced looks at everything, early access to videos and movies and all. I mean, you know, you don't need to pay motherfucking Disney Plus at this point. Let's put it that way. Yeah, right? yeah. So I got my, uh, what came was from, uh, my first writer came from the UK, if you believe it. My first official hire, other than one of my friends that was with me initially starting, he wanted to write. Um, then from there, I found a couple of skip a few years, you know, from 2006, you know, to, to 2014. Uh, this is basically just me doing blog box style stuff. 2014, I meet a kid through one of my uh, blasts asking, you know, trying to recruit new writers because now I'm full swing, I'm getting Uber access, I'm being blessed. And everybody had been telling me, why don't you do a podcast? Why don't you do a podcast? I, mean, I don't know how to do a podcast. I'm like trying to do all this content and manage a team on top of this. Mm-hmm. Bro, this dude uh, came up and uh, wound up hiring him. A month, month after the fact, he's like, why don't you have a podcast? I'm like, I don't know how to set it up. He goes, lucky you then. I'm all about that life. <laughs> I say a word. So Undercover Capes was born out of that. And, you know, started, uh, he was the one managing everything in the, in the first year. Um, and then when he, sp- he split from us, um, oh, oh, bullshit stuff. I, you know, a lot of people are emo. We're not looking for trouble or anything or drama. Yeah. But, you know, there's certain things we won't allow. And, you know, because again, I'm, as I said, I'm trying to celebrate the culture, not yeah. shit on anyone or even if it's against negative fucking people, you know, I don't want to be one of those. I don't want to be in their club. You know, I'm, I'm making my own club. Got you. So, you know, we didn't, uh, I, I didn't meet no more. But what he did when he left was he goes, well, he says it was on his part being a cop. He goes, well, here's all the shows and good luck. I'm like, what do you mean? So he sends me all the fucking shows. And this is the weekend that I had to go to New York for New York Comic Con. That he does this to me on that Friday before me leaving. Bro, I, I, up, I open it up. <laughs> yep. I open a pod being a con of my own. And uploaded at that time over 26 different podcasts before leaving to New York by myself, blasted and changed everything like hours before leaving to New York. And then after, since then, you know, is when I said, okay, there were certain people that had been writing for me with me for X amount of time. So what I did at that point was like, okay, so these people are writing with me. Now they're going to own a piece of the action. So those, those dudes that have been right and, and ladies that have been writing or dying, I said, okay, we're going to do our own network. It's still going to be called Undercover Capes. However, the way I want to do this is because of you writing and dying, you know, writing with me. I'm going to give you guys uh, ownership percentages, you know, that we have vested. So when it comes to Undercover Capes, you know, Comic Crusaders presents Undercover Capes. Undercover Capes, even though presented by Comic Crusaders, is in fact a separate entity that has a whole different hierarchy, if you will. I Yes, I am the CEO, but then I have a team underneath that. Work. Where with Comic Crusaders, it's me, and now I have two partners that I, uh, one partner maybe has been with me a year, and the other one has been a guy that's been with me, so I basically gifted him a percentage. Because okay. like my man has created over 3,000 pieces of content at this point. His name is Johnny the Machine News, so shout out to Johnny. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, yeah. it's all about building a team and just finding your, your, your path and, you know, and never be afraid. Yeah, now, uh, I want to rewind a little bit because I... I'm not versed, you know, little to none about uh, comic books and everything. I mean, I know the characters, but my experience with these characters are through, you know, secondhand from people who have the knowledge like yourself and, you know, telling me the stories and um, film and everything like that. That's, you know, where I learn about these characters because, you know, Michael Keaton, my Batman, you know, Christopher Reeves, my Superman and all that shit, you know, so. Oh, they're doing those comic books, so, you know. Yeah, the Michael Keaton Batman and Christopher Reeve Batman. DC uh, is making comic books, you know, bringing their universe into comic form. Oh, that's cool. So you're gonna get Batman '89 and Superman was it '77 or '76, whatever year that was. All right. So we're gonna get that, and he they look like Michael. He looks like Chris. You know what I mean? So if you're nostalgic for that, that's the comic book series for you. Okay, but what I was saying though, you was talking about the uh, death of Damien and everything. Yeah. Wasn't that like um, they did a poll for that, didn't they? 
Oh no, no, the one you're thinking about is Jason Todd. Oh yeah, yeah. Now, right, that's yeah. the one in the yeah in in the nineties or late eighties is the one that they did the poll. And I mean, no one liked Jason. You know, you go from somebody like Dick Grayson or Jovial Youth. You know, he grew with Batman. Then you get Jason. You know, he's like one of these little street kids from New York. You know that, that you know think that they're older than they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, try to thug. So no one really liked him. He he was a little crybaby. Yeah, yeah. he was little Tony cousin. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> oh, it's like I'm gonna get big tone off you. Don't mess with me, I, dude. I grew up with kids like this back in Brooklyn. There was this little kid. Yo, oh my god, his name was Pops. I couldn't stand him. This dude was like seven years old, but he was strapped. So he was trying to always f with the older dudes and show the strap. Like, oh, yo, what? I'm like, and it was a real strap. So I'm like, bro, God forbid I ever see you without that shit. Wait till you, you, huh, I'm gonna give you a fucking beating. He goes, Oh, I'll tell my brother afterwards. I'm like, Well, get your brother. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, that's the way it was. So, yeah, uh, that was Jason Todd, and he was very hated. The most hated Robin in the history. I mean, even though Damien now comes into a close second, because I, yeah. I, I get where that comes from, because a lot of people don't appreciate Damien either. He's like a little spoiled brat, you know? Yeah, because that's, um, that's a, his, like his son, right? His son's son from yeah. Talia. You know, which is Raziel, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Raziel Gul's uh, daughter. Yeah. So yeah, so you know, and, and, and that Damien's first appearance w- w- wasn't a Batman issue. However, they're trying to say that his very first appearance is him in the test tube from the. Uh, oh my God! It was a graphic novel by Rayshard Gul, the Demons something, and that you see, you know, like that he was in a test tube. So it's like you know, who saved it? Was it Talia or Rayshard? So, I mean, what's Rayshard want? <laughs> Race is acting a little weird, bro. If you're holding some some Wayne nut. Yeah, I mean, where he even get that from? <laughs> I was like, I guess. Oh yeah, yeah, come here afterwards. Let me scrape in there. Ew. Oh, he did some bodyguard shit or whatever. He just went there and rolled it up off the sheets whenever they was finished. <laughs> Either that or he gave his daughter a pap smear. Yeah. <laughs> no. Nah. Nah. Let's, <laughs> let's not journey down that imaginary path. <laughs> it is comic books, folks. You know, hey, hey. Yeah, but like, since you're doing like blogs and podcasts and everything or whatever, since we've shut down essentially as a world, <laughs> I mean, yeah. how has this affected you? I mean, because I mean, I, I imagine your life's blood is going to conventions and doing things like that, right? Well, okay. So for my day job, I've been working from home for mm-hmm. years already, five years. I've been working from home. So the overall concept of working from home, that didn't affect me, no. Um, but the shutdown did, because obviously, because yeah, conventions are a big part of what we do. That's how we sell the brand, if you will, you know? And me, I'm, I'm Mr. Network. I politic, I talk to everybody, every label. I'm, I'm just there. I'm not, a lot of people go for fun, of course, and to me, me, I'm just doing it for the biz, to be honest. It's like, I, you know, I want to get my next guest, whether a podcast or a vidcast. I want to moderate. I, I want to film. That's kind of what we did at Rhode Island Comic Con in 2019. Myself mm-hmm. and PCNN, which, which is uh, uh, the Critics Network and Mario Esco, uh, we work together and we film at Rhode Island Comic Con. We moderated stuff at Rhode Island Comic Con. That was a blast. See, that's the angle. And then, of course, throughout the day, it would have mingled. And, and talk to top-notch creators and then giving you the time to chat just because you're press. Because again, certain shows, you got to hustle. Mm-hmm. Other shows, they give you the access. Yeah. So it's, you know, when you're given access, that's weed pop. San Diego, New York, you know, they give you the time. Hey, we have a press conference here. You'll have X amount of time with the people. I love that. A show like the Rhode Island Comic Con, for example, uh, tough. Because they don't want you to bother them. You know, so they give you a press pass and it's like, okay, here's a press pass. You're here in press and name only. <laughs> yeah. But, and good luck. So me, I, I would just bother. I would sp- not bother, but rather speak to whomever had an empty table. Mm-hmm. So one day I'm there, Jimmy Palmiotti and Amanda Connor. They're like the Jay-Z and Beyonce of comics, if you don't know. All right. You know, they, they do Harley Quinn and oh, okay. uh, uh, they've done uh, Jonah Hex books. They, they own a company called Paper Films, which does a lot of kickstarting uh, books, yeah. which are amazing. And, and, and I know and, who these people are because I've seen the animated franchises and I've seen the movies. There excellent. <laughs> excellent. Yeah. So th- they're like the, one of the world couples of, of, of comics, right? Um, and they were there at what show was this? This is Boston Comic Con. And now when I look down, you know, I'm looking at them, no, oh, what's up, you know? And I look down the, the, the walkway, an empty table. 
Do you see this old man there all by himself? And when I raise my head to read the name, it's Marv Wolfman, Deathstroke's daddy. Oh. Teen Titan Marv Wolfman. I mean, he's a legend. He's there by himself. No one's talking to him. Opportunity. Yeah, well, I ran and thanked him. What, <laughs> my mom, I, yo, Jimmy, I love you, but this is Mars, son. You know, I ran and, oh, man, I was like, this is crazy. How could nobody want to talk to a legend like you? And I get it, though. Harley and Amanda are out there, you know what I mean? Marv is an old school creator. That Now he's getting blessed because I don't know if you watch the CW shows, but when they did the Crisis on Infinite oh, yeah, storyline, was, I mean, Marv I, was in it. Oh, shit. He showed up. I was like, they finally gave him some love, man. Because he's one of the writers in there. So it's like he deserved to be there. He's, when I saw him, I was like, damn it. Two years later, but fuck, good that they got there and recognized who he is and, and give him this opportunity and bless him with the credit as yeah. he deserves. See, you know, when I talk to people like you or whatever, I, I see that I only like things or whatever to where like, <laughs> here you are, you, you spitting the names of the people who make the things that I like. You know, and I wouldn't know that edge wise, you know, yeah. so it's just like. I like because I'm gonna I'm start saying that about myself. I like professional wrestling, but there are people out there who love professional wrestling. Oh, yeah. I've seen people spend their last, you know, picking uh, meet and greets over food. Oh, yeah. And shit, you know, because they love wrestling that much and they love the people who do it. And I'm just like. I like wrestling. No. Yeah. <laughs> I like but wrestling. I, but I'm eating. I buy a shirt, right? <laughs> I buy a shirt here and there or whatever. I mean, I'll okay. give a little piece of merch or whatnot, but uh, I'm going to eat. <laughs> I, I'll give you a story of dedication then. Because my first time ever going to San Diego Comic Con was also in 2019. And that happened through crowdfunding. I didn't expect it to happen. I, like, who cares about Comic Con and Omega going over there, right? Let me tell you, apparently people did care. And I, I was reduced to tears when, for real, I cried like a little bitch, I'll be honest. <laughs> like, yo, these people actually care mm -hmm. a lot. You know, I really realized it that day. So, I, you know, I go to San Diego Comic Con and I go to my boy Clep from Critics, right? Now, he's all about TV shows and, yeah. and movies, right? He All he cared about was Hall H. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were there Friday, we did our thing. Hall H Saturday, you know, that's Marvel Day, right? Mm -hmm. So... Money went there, wait, he was online for at least two hours, got in to Hall H to wait another 10 hours before Marvel came on. That's dedication. And yeah. I was like, I was like, Clep, um, I came here to network. So hopefully you get me in later. <laughs> Cause yeah. some one of us gotta get content upstairs. So I did my whole networking thing. I mean, I went up to Gail Simone, um, Oh my God, Brian Pulido. Um, damn, there were so many uh, folks to name that, that was just there because everybody's waiting at Hall H. So they emptied out the fucking floor. So you have a floor full of creators. Like, that's the secret, folks. Get someone to wait at Hall H to get you in afterwards. But yo, go upstairs while people are waiting. Yo, you get to talk to everybody. I had a blast. I networked, collected massive cards, got tons of books for review. And then I still was able to make it into the Hall H room. Clep somehow got me in because he got good with the lady. I don't know what he did. If he laid it down or what. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> but the security lady was like, yeah, I know who you are. The, you know, come, go go in. Clep got me. He saved me a little corner so we could stand for the rest. You know, but, you know, we obviously got to see the Marvel announcement. Got to see all those awesome actors from the Marvel. We got to see, obviously, you know, the announcement of a Harshla Ali as Blade at the very mm -hmm. end. We're like, yo, he came out with that hat like all slick. You know, oh, man. I have that video. You got to check that out. Yeah, uh -huh. I, I had words about that, uh, that casting pick or whatever. I mean, you know, I, like, wait, 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 what, what's wrong? Well, I, listen, I know Wesley's still young enough to do it, at least in my opinion. But yeah, but I mean, I, I understand. I understand. It's just like, I know what I like and what I guess what I'm used to. You know, you're accustomed to a certain thing, whatever. Oh, That's kind it. of what you, you lean toward. But my thing is. What we had in Wesley was a guy who can do the work as well. I oh, yeah. He was an actual that. martial artist. Yeah, he, that's what I'm saying. That's, get it. And that's what I want all the time. And it's like know, Michael J. White was spawned, and now you're going to put Jamie Foxx's spawn. And that's another motherfucker we need to talk <laughs> about real quick. We, we, might have to, we might have to send Big Tony to his house, too. Ah. Why the fuck 
is goddamn Jamie Foxx chasing after all of Michael Jai White's roles. You want to play Mike Tyson? Michael Jai White already did that. You want to play Spawn? Michael Jai White already did that. Get the fuck off my man nuts. <laughs> so listen, if, if Jamie Foxx tries to be Bronze Tiger on CW, because that's where Jay went. Yeah, yeah. After, you know, which is another martial arts character, then I'd be like, oh shit, you answer something here. Jamie, why are you smelling his balls for it, bro? I know, man. You need to but leave no, Michael Jai White bro, alone. He could still play Spawn too. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, but whatever. You you want Jamie, you want the big name, Todd. Hey, you know, it is what it is. I'm 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 a big supporter of Spawn anyway. I have every issue since issue one. Oh man, I, I, that was another thing too. I, I just went back uh, a couple months ago and I watched the uh HBO series. Oh, the cartoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bro, bro. I got I have all, all the tapes, but oh look, I, there you go, pulling them I out. Have, I have duplicates though. Yep. So these are my doubles, but I got the whole set in a box. Word. Yeah, man. So I know what you're talking about. Yeah, folks, guys, kids, if you don't know, this is this is the look. Amy has the <laughs> Oh, it's still got the sleeves in there. <laughs> yeah, but look at guys, this is called the videotape. All right, kids. <laughs> Dude, I think the last uh VHS tape I owned was uh whatever album the uh Buster Ryan's album. put out that had uh Gimme Some More on it. I forget what No album. way, oh damn. I forget which album that was, but it came with a VHS tape of the Give Me Some More video. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. Classic. Yo, did you hear Buster's latest album? I mean, it took him almost since the 90s to make it. <laughs> I, 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 I put ears on it. I've heard it, but I have not listened to it yet. Okay. So, wow. I mean, it played in the car and, you know, while I was thinking about other shit. So I never really sat sat with it and appreciated it. But from what I did put my ears on, pretty good it is fine it's buster man mm -hmm. i don't think we could get go wrong with buster mm -hmm. and as a legend still spitting fire because he did a, a an awesome interview with nori i know nori's annoying but that was one of the few times that when buster would speak nori was mm -hmm. like yeah bro be quiet because you be getting annoyed I, I know you're having a good time drinking but damn that <laughs> man speaks huh like i saw the one with dmx i don't know if you saw that one dmx was like a drunk uncle at a backyard party he was having a good time for sure, but he was slurring words like a mother. I'm like, huh? What? <laughs> well, X gonna give it to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely was giving it to, to somebody that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's another thing too. I mean, everybody, when it come to podcasts, I think especially within the last, I wanna say maybe three years, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe less. It seemed like everybody just jumping on the bandwagon now or whatever, as, as far as celebrities go, you know? And oh, yeah. See, I had a beef with that initially. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, man, now they're going to go into our space. The little guy can't compete. But I was thinking about it all wrong. Uh, there's this great uh, show. And actually, it starts this week kind of pregame. It's going to be full on next week. It's called PodFest. Mm -hmm. it's, it's for podcasters or people trying to open a podcast. I mean, again, this is... Podfest for me is college. Yeah. If you have the opportunity to partake, look it up. Podfest. It starts this week. Pre gaming. You get a little taste of the content. Next week is the hardcore stuff. But um, it's two weeks of podcast madness. And but in the last show, somebody was like, "You shouldn't get mad when celebrities come on, because that, that they're a gateway for you to be found." Because people that won't normally listen to a podcast may listen to a podcast because Joe Schmo's on doing it now. And then when you start looking at recommendations, you never know what's going to be recommended. And a lot of the stuff that gets recommended sometimes are the smaller shows. So it kind of creates an avenue and a lane for you. So instead of getting upset, try to celebrate and or know how to circumvent and make sure that you're able to somehow win. And how, like on Google, for example, you could do Google, uh, not on Google, YouTube. You could go and, and, and pick a, a video of a famous podcast because a lot of podcasts, you know, do vidcasts, right? Or, yeah. or transform them into video form. Bro, through YouTube marketing, you could pinpoint it and put your ad on a specific video on their platform. So you could use their fame, their audience, their sub base as, a, as an advantage to you. And again, these are all hacks, but... Instead of getting upset about the you know the big names coming, it's like okay, they're here. How can I use them now to further my brand? How can I get their people to notice me? 
and you know, there's a YouTube hack for that. <laughs> Makes sense. You see, so if you gotta think, if you think about it in this just a little bit differently, it's not competition, but another way for someone else to find you. Yeah, I mean, I get pissy about it, I guess sometimes or whatever, but I never really looked at it so much as competition. I don't look at anybody in the podcast game as competition. It's Me neither. Just like, I, 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 it's like a peer almost, you know? It's, they're there for you to draw inspiration from in the network with it, yeah. if the opportunity presents itself. Not everybody has the opportunity to work with certain people, but I yeah. mean, that's how I feel about it. Yeah, the community is very open to collaboration, which is what's great. The podcast community, especially the independent podcast community. Mm -hmm. That's something I, I, I've come across to know. Very, very collaborative, knowledgeable, you know, all about like, yeah, empowering each other, not myself. You feel me? So yeah, yeah. I, I get that. And that's kind of how Common Crew and Undercover Capes approach this thing. It's not about us, it's about you guys. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So this is why we have so many damn shows. I'm trying to find anything to entertain you guys. Like even tomorrow I have a box opening with a very cool product. <laughs> it will stay tuned for more. <laughs> Where I? There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I tried to do that shit. It's just... I don't know. It's um, it's something that I want to try, but it's more like I don't feel the need to do it. And like I, I I'm under the assumption to where like if I don't feel like I want to do it, it, I don't think it should be something that I should be trying. You're absolutely right because if if your if your soul is not in in it, it's gonna show, mm -hmm. and you don't want that because everybody finds me to be very energetic. Why? Because I want to do things I I enjoy. I try not to do something where uh, I'm iffy about, you know what? This is why I have a team. God bless them. Because if I feel that, you know what? This, we need Pass this it content. Off to him. Yeah. yeah. We need this content, but, you know, maybe they said something once that I didn't like. You know, I don't take personal shit personal, but, you know, but if you are spreading a message maybe that I'm not in agreement with, you know what I mean? I won't do it because I will bring it up. <laughs> and yeah. I don't want to do that. I don't want to shit on nobody. That's my whole point. Yeah. Like, you know, I want yeah. to do the things that I enjoy and love. That's and then, it. then it's kind of like some of the stuff I want to do is almost like an attaboy type thing or whatever. It's just like they're not paying me to do it or whatever. It's just like shit that I like and I want to talk a little bit about it or whatever. And that's it's fine. Just, it's just the process of it or whatever. Because I mean, I like using my cameras and shit like that or whatever. But I think I'm more in love with like, not so much being in front of the camera, which uh, other than, you know, what we're doing now, <laughs> my shit is blurry as fuck. I don't, there you go. There you go. Focus. <laughs> I had to put the magic fingers on it. Oh, and, shit, um, bro. Is that what wifey said too, bro? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> See, now I'm blurring out again. Come on, magic fingers. <laughs> there you go. There you Wifey's go. testing you. She's blurring it out to see it. Look, look at my man's fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Yeah, you, you made me think about my wife. Now I'm messing it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think I'm, I enjoy the process more than actually being in front of the camera or whatever. I like okay. obtaining the knowledge of how to work these things uh, rather yeah. than, you know, putting me as the focus of, you know, whatever. I, if Like, say, it's just like how you saying, it's like you want to do something, but say you don't know something, you don't know how to do this thing or whatever. Oh, he might know how to do it. And that's like, I like to be that guy sometimes. I was like, yeah. hey, I know how to do that shit. And yeah. I just pop up with my shit. Bow. Look, yeah. here we go. Opportunity. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I've taught many of, of my uh, team members and friends that are outside of the network trying to do things. And I say, hey, are you open to criticism? I always ask first, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, no one wants uh, unwarranted or I don't ask for a unsolicited. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So I was like, "Yo, you want? Yeah, you know, most people are very receptive." I'm like, "Great, I've helped them step up their game." They're like, "Holy <laughs> shit, bro, thank you." I'm like, "Okay, that's all." I just listen. I just want everybody to look good at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, if I see signs off, I'll tell you. Okay, I think this looks off, bro. You know, that's all. Like your setup is fire right now. <laughs> I like <Right>. it. <laughs> yeah, no problem, bro. Got, got, got my mustache banana over here. <laughs> Oh shit, yo man, those mustaches, yo, that's the style. You're gonna do that twisty tie thing? Uh, Wait a minute. I think that's Steve Harvey's mustache. <laughs> Did you shave him, bro? <laughs> Did you see Steve Harvey in the new Mortal Kombat movie? He's Jax? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that, that, he got that's... Diesel, bro. No wonder he stopped doing the morning show. Yeah, that, that, that was the running joke about that. That shit is hilarious. Well, I mean, 
matter of fact, since you brought it up, how do you feel about this new Mortal Kombat movie? Listen, compared to what we had before, and I always say this almost with everything, it looks pretty dope, you know, mm -hmm. the costumes, the action sequences. But when I saw that, that dude playing Jax, I just could not get Steve Harvey out of my head, bro. Mm -hmm. I just started dying. But, but other than that, though, it, for me, it was good and cool. I try not to judge anymore. Because, yeah. you know, look, look, the, and the reason I say that, when I saw Hugh Jackman for the first time in Wolverine, just when they cast him, I said, ah, Australian. That dude is mad skinny, mad tall, blah, 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 blah. But, bro, who's our Wolverine now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, you can't. So I was like, okay, stop, Al. Don't do that no mm -hmm. more. Let's just give it a chance and let's see. Yeah. You know? I, like I, me, I, my I, favorite I, DC movie, I didn't like the actor too much. I thought he was a little corny at first, you know? But then after he did this movie, I was like, oh, shit. This is my favorite DC movie. Shazam. Yeah, that was pretty good. It was a pretty good film. That I, I've come to that conclusion as well, you know, later on in my life. And especially start doing this podcast because you get people that are artists in yeah. many different um, facets and whatnot and you know you get to know the people behind their art and it's like they're putting time into something regardless if you think it's good or not they're actually putting in the work and actually putting the time yes. in so I, I quell a lot of my criticism till after I sit and watch the product and whatnot I don't even really get into um, trailers and shit no more. It, somebody be like, oh, the new such and such trailer come out. I was like, all right, when does, the only thing that I want to extract from the trailer is the release date. So I can know <laughs> when to turn on whatever stream yeah. app or try to find out when I can watch it. I don't need, because everybody, right now, everybody's talking about this motherfucking Snyder cut. Yeah, I was gonna me, ask you, bro. <laughs> driving me fucking crazy. It's getting on my <laughs> gut damn nerves but dude today they released that we're going to see a superhero in the end credits everybody's talking is it green lantern and if so which one yeah really and it is like why do we need to know that why we, is that information pertinent to this situation because snyder's trying to get do anything to make sure we view it on that day they launched hbo max around this whole schneider cut shit people are gonna watch it my thing was like before they even put the money down to, to actually make bring this into fruition to make this a, a, a real thing he was talking about hey we had a schneider cut and it had all this cool stuff in it and i was content with that i was like oh man that that's a cool what if i could have yeah. been cool with that but he just started cool complaining <laughs> like, hey man it would have had this too Hey, man, it would have had this, too. And honestly, I don't think he really did that shit. I think he was just saying shit, and they wind up giving him money, and he had to pull shit out of his ass and make it and create it. And, uh, the yeah. fake it to make it yeah. routine of stuff where, you know, you fake it, you tell people you got this, and then once you, once they tell you, okay, so let's see it. Oh, shit, time to make it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I will it, say, though, that the dark side looks like it's a complete improvement. Steppenwolf looks like the new god, Steppenwolf. Mm -hmm. So there's certain things that I've already seen in the trailer. I'm like, okay, this is so, more true to the comic. Yeah, than so this is this is a uh, it's not the Schneider cut. It is the fan service cut. <laughs> yeah, you go. That's the word. Yeah, bro. the FS cut. <laughs> yeah, and that's fine. But why you just didn't do this shit from the get go? Yeah. I know certain productions have, you know, limitations and everything, but... I mean, but there was that drama and then it was dropped. Somebody else came in and finished it, whatever. Yeah. But you still allow that version to exist and still be released. Mm -hmm. So I guess you didn't have much confidence in the person that you replaced it with. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's they probably got tired of people bitching about it. <laughs> it's like, oh, well, we got to recoup some money somehow. Snyder, here you go. <laughs> and I don't think it was a bad movie, really. But, I mean... Well, but that's people. With anything, yeah, it could have been better. <laughs> of course, of course. I mean, but again, when you translate a book, whether it's a comic book or a traditional book, to a movie, it's always going to lose something because whomever mm -hmm. is directing it or producing it mm -hmm. got to throw their f and two cents in it, mm -hmm. not really respecting the OG content or you know updating it to what they think is you know more modern. Like, nah, man, give us what we read. Uh huh. And so I at least do what Robert Kirkman did with Walking Dead. The reason Walking Dead is different from the comic and the order of deaths and who dies is because he wants to throw off the readers. Yeah, exactly. So when you tell me that from the get, I accept it. Yeah. 
But when you try to say this is this, and then it's completely different from what I read, this is not that. Stop yeah. it. And I, I respect that as well, because like, once again, I'm not the comic book reader or whatever. I know what I know from media. So the whole, I've watched Walking Dead from day one all the way up to current, except for the new shit that they just dropped. I had to catch up on that. Yeah, see last night's episode. Okay. Yeah, so I had to catch up on the new shit, but I have watched from day one. I found that shit by accident in Afghanistan. I was bored. Oh, as- in Afghanistan? Yeah. I was bored Yo, as folks. You hear this? He found yeah. walking there in Afghanistan, an American born boy like this. Yeah, so it was <laughs> like somebody had a hard drive and it had a TWD on there. I was like, what the fuck is this? Is this some porn? He's like, nah, man, it's a, a show called The Walking Dead because the first season was long. He said porn. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hard drive trading gets rough. I get it. TWD, <laughs> two white dicks. Well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, too wide deal though i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but yeah so i got it the first season was like only six episodes or some shit right six or seven it was very short yeah a yeah very short first so episode. i got a taste of it and i was like oh this is pretty good this is a cool concept and then when i got back to the states i, I threw my wife on it and by that time i think season two was getting ready to start or it had started so I was like, hey, look, this is season one. You need to watch this. There's only like six or seven episodes. So we watched it and we took the journey ever since. And I appreciate it because it's a good series. There's a lot of growth and development and characters and a little, lot of twists and turns or whatever. And this is a cool show to me because I don't know mm-hmm. the source material. But from what I have heard of the source material, that is, you know, it's not too far off, but it kind of nods to it like how you were saying and whatnot so i appreciate shit like that you know just for my own knowledge and shit but the show as is you know without the source material i think it's fine well it's a great show uh, mm-hmm. absolutely and so you know i actually bought that kind of book off the stands for a minute i got i collected from one to 100 you know but then i started seeing the prices i'm like this is gonna drop one day so i made i made several stacks selling yeah. one to one to 100 but I was one of those early buyers. I picked that up the same day I picked up Conan from Dark Horse when Dark Horse got that, right? Mm-hmm. So I read that first issue, I fell in love. And I was like, oh man, this is zombies a little bit different, black and white comics. I love, I, when I first started reading comics, I was, I got into the black and white comics, being yeah. the Savage Sword of Conan and stuff. Again, I'm a little kid, you know, and the Savage Sword of Conan, if you don't know what that is, you know, was an oversized Marvel magazine that gives you stories of Conan, but they're very adult. So, you know, that, that, that's my first look at titties and magazine and all, mm. you know, but mama, you know, it's like, oh, these are just cartoons. Or they ain't real. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, no. Sure, mom. <laughs> <Whatever you say. laughs> you know, so I fell in love with black and white artwork ever since then. So when I saw The Walking Dead, I was, I was telling my boys, these are comic collectors, bro. And they're like, oh, it's black and white. It ain't going to go nowhere. I'm like, bro, you guys are wrong. You guys are severely wrong. And of course, several years later, what happens? The books blow up. Good luck trying to find a, a 9.8 for under a thousand dollars. And um, my boy was like, You want to sell me your shit? I'm like, Bro, too, you missed the boat, bro. <laughs> you missed this. Honey. You better get them digital copies, baby. <laughs> you know, hey, hey bro, that, that, that's what it is. I, I don't play with, 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 with I, I really am a good speculator when it comes to looking things up that are low cost now so you can flip it later. Yeah. That I'm pretty good with. Mm-hmm. And, and I found all these avenues and it's just like, trust me, <laughs> just buy it, put it away. That's all. You'll thank me five years later. Yeah, It's just like, man, it's, I have a hard time just sitting still, let alone sitting still trying to read some shit. And But nowadays comics, Rob, I swear, modern comics will take you 10 minutes to read. Yeah, like Old I mean, school it, 70s comic, that'll take you a half hour. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of got a taste of it because um, I went back not too long ago. And I read all six issues of the uh, Scott Pilgrim books. Oh, wow. Great. I, see, that movie I love. That was a fun movie. I, although different from the comic, but still was a lot of fun. Yeah. So <laughs> it came out, what, 2010 or some shit, right? Because they yeah. just had the 10-year anniversary. And wow. I hadn't right. watched it since it came out on Blu-ray. So I'd never seen it in the theater, but I seen it on Blu-ray when it came out. And that was like one of the earliest Blu-rays I can remember even owning. Oh, wow. And I maybe watched it twice. And I didn't appreciate it for what it was then, you know. And then here we are 
10 years later, uh, one of the guys I know from another podcast asked me to come on and do a review of Scott Pilgrim. And I was like, okay. word, I still got my digital copy from 2010 <laughs> when I put it on my um, my freaking iPad and shit. Cool. So I, damn, I had some downtime. I pulled it up on my iPad, propped it up. And I was like, dude, 10 years later, I appreciate this movie more so than what I did the very first time I watched it. Just the little things and plus all the actors in the movie have moved on and did such great shit. We got Bigger Marvel. Thing. We got Captain America. We got Superman yeah. in there. You know, Crazy, right? Just to think about that cast alone. And um, I was like, this was on a book series, right? So I mm-hmm. looked up Brian O'Malley, the author and shit. And I was like, oh, it's six books. And I was like, just based on the content of the movie, it's video game related and all this other stuff. I was like, my 10 year old is going to like this. Yeah. So before I made her watch the movie, I made her read all six books. And nice. Watch the movie. <laughs> oh, what was the thoughts on your kid then? You know, seeing something such old content than an older movie. What was that like? For, for well, your kid? I mean, she is as old as the movie. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so it's just like, um, for her, it was really relatable because I feel like it speaks her language because all the video game stuff and like comic books and the drawings and everything, mm-hmm. it spoke her language and much so much more so did the books because that's almost like her drawing style because she likes to draw and oh, shit gotcha. and she draws characters similar to the ones in the Scott Pilgrim books. Gotcha. So she's seen this, she's like, oh crap. And then I had to get on her ass because I never read the books and I just wanted her to read them first. So I was like, <laughs> all right, here's book one. Read this book. And then she read it. I was like, all right, now give it to me so I can read it. Now here's book two. <laughs> and then she uh, she slapped. She, uh, I finished book one. She dragging her feet on book two. I was like, because she's 10 years old. Of course. <laughs> I was like, hey, read that goddamn book so I can read it. <laughs> and, I, and I'm just waiting on her. So she finally get through all six books. I read all six books. And then we watch the movie. Okay. And we sit there, we watching the movie, and I'm sitting there with my shit eating grin. I was like, watch this, watch this. In my head, because I don't want to yeah. spoil the movie. And I'm watching her react to the movie. She's like, oh, this is great. You know, and I was like, oh, ah, nice. I did a good job. Nice, nice. But what good I even, job on you, bro. That's but awesome. what I even noticed with her is she, she's, she, whenever she's exposed to the retro shit, she enjoys it. Because we went to Walmart one day, and I didn't know they had this, but she brought it to me. And it was a little handheld, the little handheld games. She's like, what's the Oregon Trail? I was like, yo, this is a game that I played when I was a kid. And, and they made a little handheld of the Oregon nice. Trail. Nice. Get out. So she's like, you played this when you was little? I was like, yeah, when I was in school, when I was probably a little bit younger than you, I played the Oregon Trail. And she's like, I'm buying this right now. And she bought it with her money. And she played the shit out of the organ trail. <laughs> wow. Isn't that awesome when they find our stuff from our era? Because, you know, uh, I went to a convention once and I took my daughter. You know, she's a big video game girl. And an anime manga. You know, she loves Sonic. Mm. She loves Sonic. But we went to a convention once and I started, I ran into a dealer that had, if you remember, the old school Nintendo handhelds that you open up and flip. That the screen on the top or the screen on the bottom and the little controllers on the side. Inspiration that, 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 for the DS. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So she saw this. She was like, oh, what's this? They're like, that's how we used to game. You know, that was our portable. And it was not no Game Boy. It's just one game per <laughs> thing. Yeah, you know, the little um the little white plastic joints, the tiger joints. They had like oh Street my Fighter God, and, yeah. oh and my Marble God. Madness and all kind of crap. It was funny because yeah, the background always remained the same. It was just some pixelated black lines, <laughs> you know, that you're doing your thing with, which is great. You know what I found on my phone the other day? Tecmo football. Oh shit. Oh gee. I yo, dude, dude, I am so hooked. My wife is like, what are you doing? Well, she's in me on my phone. Well, she's on LMN watching Lifetime because it's not my shit. I'm like, okay, I'll sit here with you, babe. But then I'm boom. I say, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm on Tecmo, bro. Tecmo! <laughs> I finally got my first two wins. They assigned me the Jets. So that's why I've been sucking until now. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry for your loss. <laughs> hey, I'm a Giants fan, so I, I'm used to being... I'm, I'm a masochist, apparently. I like, I, like, I like to suffer. When they, when they won, they 
uh, most recent Super Bowl, um, the Giants. I think I might have been in Iraq or something like that. Well, again, thank you for your service, bro, because you, you got, you're all over the world, huh? Uh, so, uh, so you're so- picking up Scott Pilgrim in Afghanistan and you're finding <laughs> about the Giants in Iraq. What is what so, so when they won, and I remember one of the plays, I forget what it is, but I remember the call from the, the announcer. He was like, touchdown, Giants. And every time I did something after that, it's like even now to this day, I, you know, that shit stick in my head. So like somebody do something cool, like they drop something, I'll be like, touchdown, Giants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, those, those are good years and I'm waiting. I'm like, I have high hopes for DJ, but I know they're not really going to keep him. You know, it's a shame. I listen, they almost made it, you know. F you, Philly, for losing. You bastards. One way or another, Philly always messes us over. Whether it's through a win or a loss, you bastards. <laughs> they killed it. Please don't tell me you're an Eagles fan. Oh, no. I'm, I'm uh, Louisiana. I, 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 I would have had to walk off right now. <laughs> no, no, no. The Saints I, I deal with. No problem. Yeah. And then this is like, I have no expectations for them. I mean, we have one of the greatest <laughs> quarterbacks of all times, but we have the shittiest team or whatever. And I appreciate okay. him for sticking with him that long. <laughs> my brother, my brother. I lived in Massachusetts prior to moving to Orlando, Florida. All right? I've only been here a year and a couple of months. So when I got away from Massachusetts, man, I was like, hey, thank God, yo, because fucking Patriot country after them, they drive me nuts. And all of a sudden, Brady comes to, to Florida. God damn it. <laughs> That's what I thought. I'm like, nah, they ain't going to do shit. This team sucks. And yet, in year one... <laughs> yeah, we, we throwing down the tr- Lombardi trophy off of boats. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. Okay. It, it hurts my very soul. It hurts my throat. My tongue fattens anytime I say this. But I must admit, Brady is the GOAT. That's, that's good, man. It's just damn. He okay. left from a successful team and went and to made another, another team, team successful. <laughs> another team successful, yeah. Crazy! It's like all these Floridians out here partying, but yo, son, if Brady was not here, you would not have gotten that. <laughs> yeah. So respect. It wasn't your team. It was Brady. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I mean that you know begs to ask the question is. What if he went anywhere else? Would it have been the same result? That's a good question because with the way that the Giants play, if you played for the Giants, I, I tell you, it would not have happened. <laughs> I, I love my team, but yeah, nah, bro. They would have been dropping Brady's balls, bro. Both mm-hmm. of them. Yeah, and then now, um, <laughs> like I said, Drew motherfucking Breeze. Breeze. Every time he steps foot on the field, Breaks a goddamn record somehow, but they still lose the game. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? That shit blows my effing mind that someone as good as him, like, you keep losing, son. Like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm- I understand his loyalty to the Saints or whatever, because they was the ones that gave him a chance, you know? He yeah, but nah, man, move on, bro. I'm pretty sure that you as Saints fans want to see him win somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I, I respect him. I mean, because like every year it comes around or whatever. I'm just like, I mean, I don't, I don't get into details of contract length and all kind of stuff. So I don't know how long his contract is for. But like every year, I'm just looking. I was like, did he move? Did he get a trade yet? Because uh, it was the same thing when um for the Pelicans, uh, the basketball team in New Orleans, um Anthony Davis, he went to the Lakers, and I was not mad at that at all. Because like, dog, you would have never got a ring here in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're honest, bro, and truthful to the cause. Because New Orleans, yeah, suffers. the Lakers is another one, though. Yeah, New Orleans suffers the same. Uh, just their sports teams in general suffer the same fate. Anytime they get good components, they get rid of them. <laughs> so I mean, the Saints historically did that. They they won the first Super Bowl with an amazing squad. Traded all those pieces away, all of them. All of them going well, to well, that, that sounds like the Florida baseball team. Didn't the year after they won the World Series, they broke up their entire world championship team hmm. and they haven't won? <laughs> it's like bad move, son. Bad move. And then I don't have they don't have a baseball team in Louisiana. So when I moved to Houston, I adopted the Astros. So oh man, poor man. But I mean they're not that bad either though. 
didn't I? Yeah. Year one, we talk about year ones and stuff. Year one, I moved here. They won the freaking World Series. So I was like, yeah, I did that. <laughs> oh, that was the year they won when you moved? Yeah, when I moved to this city, that was the year they won the World Series. Oh, damn, bro. So you and I was like, a good luck charm. And I, and I was just like, yeah, man, I'm good luck. And then we had Harvey. I was like, oh, I'm not good luck. <laughs> <laughs> now you curse the rest of the team. Oh, my gosh. Fantastic. How are you guys dealing with the snow out there, bro? Because I, I I know that Texas is not used to that to that white stuff. Uh, no, you know, no. it, the it's... only white stuff you're used to, is, you know, it's illegal. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fine now. I mean, it, it last week was a shit show, and it's just like uh, we we had this conversation, or whatever. That people are all all over the place, like, oh man, they underprepared. Why they didn't have more stuff or whatever? I said like, because this is a once in a thirty year occurrence. You know, really? wait, once in the 30. So it happened before. I mean, it's happened before, but it's like very rare and seldom that shit like this happens in the South or whatever. I mean, same thing with Katrina, same thing with Harvey. I mean, you know, we get bad weather and whatever, but it never gets to the extent of this. That's why we're not ready for it. There's no winterized nothing down here. There's no freaking snow plows. No, none of that shit because shit doesn't happen. <laughs> but just this one time. This is one time. It fucked everything up. Oh, gotcha. Hold on. Let me call my daughter. Yeah, no problem. I'm sorry, and it seems like um. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. That's my awesome college student kicking ass at a uh, Full Sail University. And where? Full Sail University. Oh, so she down there with NXT. The media arts. Oh yeah, exactly. But because of fucking COVID. Do you know how angry I am when I found out that NXT is filmed there? And what's cool is that Full Sail gives their students hands-on yeah. experience. So it's them filming all that stuff and mm. doing the production. So I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to meet a whole bunch of cool people as they start. Because if you if you don't believe it or not, there was this gentleman at the 7-Eleven that's five minutes from me. He was working on becoming, he was a jobber. Mm -hmm. like working his way up he's no longer at the 7-eleven so i'm thinking that his career is going to be taken off i gotta hit him up his name is mark so shout out to mark but yeah that, that's his whole thing apparently uh at that 7-eleven we get a lot of the wrestlers from nxt going there so he was like that's how he met uh one of the producers of wwe that he kept it quiet for people. He was like, oh, I know who you are. <laughs> you know what I mean? Type like, scenario, thank you for what you do. And the guy was like, thank you for keeping me quiet. And no problem, he's my car, hit me up. I was like, wow, like that? Like, yeah, very friendly. So yeah, hopefully one day I'll get to see NXT if Florida decides to open up fully. Yeah. But that's something I got to I mean, Florida, ain't Florida wild, wild west anyway? Just like they got everything going on down there. They're going to have WrestleMania there this year again. They, yeah, they they're doing tons of stuff out here, but it's just me as, as an individual. I'm not going to partake yeah, just because you know I want to keep safe. You know, I, I really don't want to get sick. Ha, have you had since you know you're not a native Floridian or whatever? I think I said that right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> have you experienced uh, the Florida man? No, I, I've seen the Florida man comic book, but I haven't experienced the Florida man. No. Oh man! Matter of fact, today. On he my said phone today. <laughs> today, on my phone, I was on Facebook or Twitter, one of the two, seeing a Florida man ad flash up on my screen, and I always no. got to tag uh, Brandon McIntyre. That's my homeboy, B Mac, because we always trade Florida man stories with each other. <laughs> Anytime we come across one, we send it to each other. So damn, headline: Florida man is charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for throwing. An alligator through a Wendy's drive-thru window. <laughs> <laughs> only in Florida. I used to say only in New York. No, only in Florida, certain things. Florida man. Florida is the, the outbreak point for the pandemic, and it's the daggone freaking... The, yeah, because we got psychos here. They want to party hard without masks, go into stores without masks, do everything without a fucking mask. They're like, listen, but it ain't about you. It's about you respecting others. Just wear your shit, please. Man, Respect me. Eating zombie face, eating people there, <laughs> bro. When I see that's the shit that worried me because I know there's cycles out here. I mean, the ho homeless population 
In Florida, it's absolutely insane. But why, why better place to be homeless? Though, you know, exactly. That's what I'm saying. It's not. It doesn't get cold, really. The only thing you got to really worry about is them, them storms and shit. Yeah, so, you know, and I've been here a year, so you know, the hurricane season was really nothing because apparently mm-hmm. in Orlando, knock on wood, if I find any, it's only been it about. <laughs> oh my God! Thank God my cat is not here. I just there's a lizard, and my cat just she she tears lizards up, yeah. and this little thing needs to run for its life. Down, down, Daryl, down, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> That's my cat over there. <laughs> Oh man, yeah, well, yeah. Listen, this is our first pet. She's been amusing. Although um, one day, I saw her at the window, and she's staring, and I see her tail fluffy. She has this like bullhorn going down the middle of her back. I don't know what's going on. This is my first pet, so I see there's another cat out there hissing at her. So all I went to do is just grab my cat to try to move her away from the window because I don't want them, you know, yeah. any incidents, bro, <laughs> folks. When a cat is staring down another cat and they have a fluffy cat, do not t- a fluffy tail, do not touch them. <laughs> Bro, my cat jumped on my face like Star with a fish. <laughs> Made my lip look like a fucking twat. Right here, cut open. My my hat, this is why I have a scar on my forehead. It's from her nails. Insane. So there you go. Lesson, folks. If there's another cat she's facing, don't touch the cat. Just close the window. Don't touch the cat. <laughs> You I see, got fucked up by a cat, bro. I got fucked up by a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> now that was funny because we were doing um the wrestling podcast yesterday, and I, you know, I, I I randomly select people to jump on or whatever. I just send them a a link to the chat and whatnot. So I had my homeboy Zip, and he was uh grossly unprepared because he thought when I sent him the link, it was just like a link to watch the feed, but it was okay. like a link to join the conversation. Join so, the feed. <laughs> yeah. So. He in there with us or whatever, and there's a cat in the window looking at, just staring, like how you were saying, just staring out the window. I was like, hey, man, you got cat over there? He's like, yeah, this is my cat. And he rubbing. I said, quit playing with your pussy on the camera. <laughs> so we just sitting there talking, having a conversation about wrestling and shit, and another cat come up. And it's, now it's two cats looking out the window. I was like, god damn, you running a cat sanctuary or whatever? You got the pussy palace going on? <laughs> So he's like, yeah, this is my cats. And then, so we getting into the conversation more. A third cat walk up and he just crawl up in the window and look, they all, three cats looking out the window. And I'm just like, I didn't even address it at this point. You just see me on camera like. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I was like, what the hell is going on? And then he also got this Instagram account. I forget the name of it. Uh, Duck Man or some shit like that. He got like a little tribe of ducks just be following him around and shit. Oh, really? I got the game, got Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, when I first lived in Florida for those first three months, you know, many years ago, there was a, a, a certain duck that would always come to our window, you know, because I would feed them. So ducks act like cats. You show them some food, they come every day when they see you. So it's like in the morning, I would just go outside when I used to smoke cigarettes, I used to smoke a stove outside. This duck would see me from the other side of the pond and literally fucking run to me. And it's all you see is motherfuckers just like jetting, son, jetting. I'm like, what the hell? And he comes up to me looking for food. And I'm like, no, this is a cigarette, homie. I don't think you want to smoke a stove unless you're Howard the Duck or something, you know? Please tell me you remember Howard the Duck. Movie. Oh, yeah. I, I, I just recently watched that movie not too long ago. <laughs> I, I added it to the movie collection because it is a Marvel property. But is it an awesome? I mean, it, yeah, it's cheesy and it's stupid, but that's Howard. Because if you ever read the comics, again, that was also one of my early iterations. This is, I love the ducks always. Da- Donald, Daffy, and Howard. <laughs> Favorite. I want to see them in a three way match. Who would win? <laughs> oh, man, you got to throw Scrooge in there. Scrooge oh, I, duck. But Scrooge is old. I don't want to be beating well, an nah, elderly duck. He could be the special against referee. <laughs> oh, he could be the referee. I don't want to beat an elderly duck, bro. Then you can have terrible. Huey, Dewey, and Louie on commentary. Bro. There you go with the duck burst. Done. There it is. With the randomly random ramblings from Rob, <laughs> we have the duck burst going on on the uh, Duck Wrestling Network, DWN. You see, well, I'm, I'm going to have to make a comic book now so you can put that in your stockpile and you yeah, sell bro. it later. <laughs> I want to see the, the Duck Wrestling Network. I see it already, bro. I love it. DWN. 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 I, see, <laughs> I hear the crowd chanting it right now. And Scrooge, do you smell the money? Do yeah, you smell bro. the duck soup? 
Where? Oh man, uh, that's gonna terrify them, bro. That'll All be right. when they wrestle like a wolf or something. Here's here's some soup. Yeah, we Ducks. we want to ruffle their feathers. That's what we ah, no, we don't. <laughs> I need to get that sound drop, get the rim shot. Yes, you do, bro. You gotta All I got is this, this loud ass horns. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Listen, that, that, that's good old Red Alert from back in the days in New York. DJ mm-hmm. Red Alert, someone he was playing them horns. Mm-hmm. I, I, listen, I grew up in the great era of hip hop. And, and, and if you want to laugh there, it took my uncle from Puerto Rico to tell me at 10 years old, Alex. You don't listen to BLS? I mean, what are you talking about? Listen to this music. And he put my uncle from PR, not knowing a word of English, put me on to hip hop. <laughs> and hey, I fell in love ever since. M- m- music is transcendent. It goes beyond barriers, colors, and language. It? And he's putting me on to, I mean, good hip hop, Big Daddy Kane, you know what I mean? Slick Riff, Public Enemy. And then I found Video Music Box after that with Ralph McDaniel. So it's like my journey started all because my uncle that didn't know a word of English said, have you ever listened to this station? <laughs> I mean, I, man, it, it kind of upsets me sometimes because I like I hear something with a great beat or whatever. I just can't understand the content because like um, Bad Bunny just came out with that uh, joint called Booker T. And I'm a wrestling fan. Booker T. I know who Booker T is. So I met Booker T in person. He is one of the coolest dudes ever. I just put I said Booker T. He goes, yo, what up? And he just puts out his hand. His big ass hand is probably the size of my fucking face. <laughs> He's a big dude, homie. He's a big homie, for real. But he is so, so down to earth, Rob. He is just extremely cool. You know, yeah, this is what I'm working on. This is what I'm doing. Just sit us up here. Like I could have him as a potential guest. So if I have him as a potential guest, you want to talk to him with me? Shit. Fucking right. Let's book a tea, son. Hey, I, mean, I grew look, up see, watching I mean, him we, on we WWE. recording right now. I have this for audio record if this ever happens. I was like, hey, no, you, no, no, no. You, you remember? You remember? Uh, <laughs> no, I got you, bro, that if this happens, I will want you on it. Because, uh, yo, he again, just three people, he was just a very cool and humble dude, excited to talk about what he was working on. But more so, he wasn't even talking about himself, which is mm-hmm. what's amazing. He was talking about his students in his yeah. wrestling school and his. I mean, he saw oh, you got to talk to my homie here and this cat here. I was like, yo, I mean, to see somebody on his level, not even worry about who he is, but like, yeah. yo, you got to check know out he, my extended he, he know family. His, he know his bread is buttered, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put on the homie. <laughs> he don't need the margin. He got that butter. Mm-hmm. Booker T, future mayor of Houston. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm putting that into existence. Oh, well, word! You th- will he do it? You think will he go for it? I mean, maybe because I mean he do a lot of or uh, charitable work and all kind of other stuff down here. I mean, he definitely has a platform. His school is here in Houston. I mean, so I mean, that's my only regret being in Houston this long and I haven't made it down there to dag on see a show yet. And my only excuse is that it's down there in Texas City, which is you know surrounding. So. I've been to New York. New York is a big little city. A lot of people. But Houston is the only place that I live in the north side and I could drive to the south side and that'll take an hour. Oh, nice. Okay. And still be in the same place. I don't don't understand that. From my door to the door of the childhood home that I grew up in is two hours and 30 minutes. Just think about that. Almost half of that drive is still inside of Houston. (laughs) Wow, really? Yeah. How big is Houston? It's I never just, been. Well, Houston proper, you know, the center or whatever. I mean, it's it's a real big size. But I mean, I'm on the I'm north of Houston. I'm in spring, so they just call it all Houston. You look at the map, it's like, all right, that's Houston. <laughs> <laughs> no matter it's all what, there. it's all the same. So let's just rename Texas to Houston and do- and be done with it. Come yeah, on. I mean, shit is the what the third largest city in the United States. <laughs> Got I like how you said that, that that large little city with New York. Yeah. <laughs> but ain't no city like it, brother. Dog, I, I was just talking to somebody about it the other day, man. I thought I was gonna lose my life out there, man. It's just and it wasn't like no, you know, criminal shit or whatever. It was just I took an Uber to Times Square and I'm not used to the, them roads and how people drive, and I'm in the backseat like Oh, these motherfucking taxi drivers, I hate them, son. I hate them. Dumb in New York. I mean, listen, when you're riding with them, you love them because you're going to get to where you got to get to. But if you're a driver behind one of them, 
No, nah, you're not going to be very happy. <laughs> so <laughs> you're going to want to murder one of them. For real. It was akin to, have you seen the Men in Black movies, right? Mm-hmm. You remember when him and Tommy Lee Jones, he hit the red button in the car and it was just like, <laughs> that's how I was in the back seat. I was like, <laughs> yo, yo, for real. That's how they listen. I, there was about two years ago that I had gone and uh, I went, wanted to take my niece to, to a, a toy store, you know, Toys R Us in Times Square. So we made the mistake of driving to the city, but we finally found a parking spot. And the moment we're about to start backing in, a cab just decides, he starts honking at us, not to let us park. Bro, I was two seconds away from coming at that car. It took both my brothers and my wife to hold me down from opening the passenger door and beating some ass. Cause I was like, yo, we've been here an hour looking for parking. We found it. And this guy wants to be a dick. I want to kill him right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's see, like I said, the New York has not gone out of me yet. I'm dying for it to leave because it's it's very crazy. <laughs> and that, that, that's another thing I didn't understand because like Houston, you know, just living in this area, this is the biggest city I've ever lived in and, you know, all the places that I've been. So I'm not used to big city living yet. Okay. So we go to the Galleria, which is like the biggest, most expensive mall out here in this bitch, right? This is where the celebrities go to shop and all this stuff. They got a Tesla store on the inside. They got a skating rink. They got all kind of crazy shit, right? So my first experience as an adult going to this place, I might have went as a child or whatever, but I don't remember that shit. But I let the family out. I was like, y'all get out. I'll go find somewhere to park. I'll meet you somewhere in the store. Hour later. (laughs) <laughs> so they done been around the whole fucking mall oh, they done, they starting to get something to eat and shit and I've been in the parking garage for an hour trying to find a parking spot and I'm just like this makes no sense I'm never coming here again <laughs> yeah but I was just wait for them by the door they all finish eating y'all because we gotta leave yeah cause it's or, just or like how about you take the car to find parking and I bet you they would have found something in a minute to piss yeah, you off it's just like I went in there and like the experience was just like, I didn't give a fuck anymore. It was just like, I just spent almost an hour trying to find a place to park to come in here for 10 minutes. I was like, fuck this shit. <laughs> this is why I tell you that I tell most people that New York is a good place to get drunk in because when you're blasted and if you have a friend that's looking for parking, you'll be cured by the time you get home. Cause that's how long it'll take you to find parking. One time, uh, when I visit Mama Dukes from Mass, you know, we did a uh, uh, after party for New York Comic Con. So we, we're around my mama's hood in Brooklyn. I'm blasted. Oh, you know, wifey driving. She doesn't like to drink, which is great. I got sober looking for parking. By the time we found parking, I'm like, I'm not tired. I feel straight. I, think I need to have another drink in order to get back to where I was. I could pass out. Bro. Just the final parking was two hours, so I understand your pain. Yeah, and shit. When I went to uh, New York that one time, uh, because we went there for to MetLife Stadium for WrestleMania. Oh, you saw WrestleMania? Yeah. Which one? That was the one. Um, Daniel Bryan. I mean, not Daniel Bryan. Uh, Kofi Kingston won the title, and that was the main event. Uh, Ronda Rousey, uh, freaking Charlotte, and uh, oh wow, say word, nice one. So I, I went there and got to see that. And we just paid for it. We was like, here, man, valet. We all put in on it. It was like, here, just take this. I ain't- Hey, please, you go through the fucking headache. <laughs> like, you do it. I said, like, hopefully the car be back when we get here. Here's my ticket. <laughs> right? He's probably was driving around the whole time. <laughs> like, all right, WrestleMania finished. I never found parking, but here's your car. Fuck it. They just drive around the whole show. Just constantly putting gas in there like a jet plane and shit. You know how they have another plane fly up to it, so it can yeah, just and that's flying. how it is, bro. No, <laughs> a, a, another car Put came it in up. The car, that... just keep driving, <laughs> bro. Let me ask you though: When you were in New York, did you try New York pizza? I, I, uh, I did. Didn't. Oh, you I, did. I I, 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 I. This is what I did. I was in New York and I had a slice of pizza. So there you go. That's my New York slice of pizza. I didn't go to a reputable freaking corner store or recommendation. I was just like, it was after the show. I was kind of drunk. And I, just came, <laughs> I was like, hey, dog, Hey, hey, I can't leave yet. I'm in New York. I gotta get a slice of pizza. And I was like, oh, it's still open. Let me get a slice. And I just grabbed me a slice of some random pizza and I had it. 
But let me ask you, are they the same size in Texas as they are in New York and you eat them the same way? What, uh, pizza? Yeah. Well, see, there's like not a, a Texas style of pizza or whatever. So what you get here in Texas is um, a lot of places co-opt in different places. Like yesterday, matter of fact. Not, <laughs> no, not yesterday, day before, because I love pizza. Uh, I had my first Detroit style pizza. What the hell is a Detroit style That's what pizza? I'm saying. I didn't know what the fuck this was. <laughs> what is it? What is it? What's the difference? Um, I didn't know it was a Detroit style pizza until somebody told me after the fact. But I mean, it's kind of deep dish, so it's a little, it's a little okay. thicker. So it's ready. Okay. Yeah, it's thicker, and uh, I think they do like the sauce some kind of different way or whatever. I mean, I was like, it's just pizza. Let me eat it. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but that's nah, like, man. yeah, that was Detroit style. I was like. Okay. Now, for me, nothing could be a New York slice done right with semolina crust where you fold it and it cracks. Oh, yeah, because I like that. Here, I like that. When, when, here in Florida, motherfuckers eat pizza with a fork and knife. So when they saw me at the local shop, yeah. order a slice doing, and just take it and fold it up. And crack. <laughs> yep. And they're like, let me guess, you're from New York. <laughs> how do you know he goes only you motherfuckers fold the slice i'm now, like really dog today i had a slice of pizza i just like i st- i stopped at the little joint to put air in my tire and uh oh my battery died <laughs> i stopped at the um, little joint put air in my tire and um they got a place called pepperonis or whatever and there's like they had a big flashing light. It was almost like Krispy Kreme, big red light flash. Oh, it damn. Like, it's Krispy like, Kreme. It, it like we sell by the slice. I was like, oh. Ooh. So I don't have to wait for a whole fucking pie? Hell yeah. I walk right oh. up in there. I was like, he's like, how can I help you? Let me get a slice. He's like, no problem. He Is it a New up. York slice? So yeah. size. Yeah, well, yeah, it was about yay big. See, thin. I, I need people to understand that because it drives me crazy here. The local shop sells by the slice, and it's the New York size big old triangle. Yeah. But when you order a pie, there's like those Massachusetts small yeah, that, ass fucking yeah. pizza hut slices, and I hate that. So I'm like, why can't you give me house style? They're like, we can't do house style for out. Why not? Uh, I was like, fuck, so bro. Let, give so me my me, New York pie. So let me get eight single slices and just put them together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> bro, I, I, when I go there, I actually look to see how many slices they have, like, you know, ready to heat up. And if it almost equates a pie, I'll take all of those. Oh, why would you get a pie? Like, nah, I'd rather pay more and get the size I want. Mm-hmm. I mean, ladies probably say that too. But... Hey, hey, hey. Hey, wherever. <laughs> but that's, um, I've just been on a pizza kick lately. So within the past month, I've had the Chicago style, the, like the big cake looking slices yeah you know? that's it yeah you're right bro that is a cake bro that's what that is it's cake with a little cheese and sauce on it yeah so i had that for the first time or whatever i i regret it begrudgingly i did not have that in chicago because i like to go to the origin i hear you yeah because i i was in chicago and we found a pizza joint but it wasn't like a sh- sh- no shit chicago it was more no like one, it was yeah. more like a new york style pizzeria in chicago that's because okay. that's what it was like or whatever it wasn't like the big monster pie cake looking chicago shit so i didn't ha- get to have it in chicago i got a slice in new york like the little long skinny joint yeah and then um it. only here in texas i've had a detroit style <laughs> and then i had new york style and i had chicago style all here because they just kind of imported because they don't have no texas style i think a texas style pizza would have something to do with barbecue and some pulled pork or something i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what a pernil slice, bro! You talking about Puerto Rican? I would eat a pernil slice in a heartbeat. Some pernil, you know, some pork shoulder up, shredded all over a. Pe- oh my god, bro, bro! Did we just invent a new slice here? I don't know. Uh, copyright, uh, <laughs> comic <Christmas laughs> Yeah, random. No, this, 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 yeah, exactly. A random rambling with Rob's Comic Crusaders copyright for a Texas style pulled pork. 
barbecue pizza. So, oh my god, that sounds see delicious. now that's that's no short of a, a barbecue out here in Texas because I mean that's one of their jams or whatever here Kansas City. So what's the biggest jam? So what's the big? Listen, you're talking to someone that was raised on the East Coast, up mm-hmm. north, and now I'm, now I'm here in Florida. What is the go-to food in Texas? Like this is what you gotta have when you're here. Well, uh, Houston specifically, since I've been here, um, there's a place called the Turkey Leg Hut. The Turkey Leg Hut. <laughs> That's not the stuff. It sounds already. weird, right? But yeah, they are making money hand over fence, hand over fist, daggone tricking out turkey legs, dog. Just like you can go, you can go there and just get a turkey leg dressed up with all manner of toppings or whatever. They got like a seafood turkey leg or whatever. They got all kind of turkey. On a turkey yeah. leg. On a turkey leg. Is it like a big ass turkey leg? They put it on the Looking like a barbarian with those big ass legs. Yes. Big Whoa. ass turkey leg. They season it, cook it, and they put all your toppings on there. So it's like the seafood one, they got like shrimp and all kind of sauces. They just drop it on top of the turkey leg. I went and I had a baked potato turkey leg. Mm. So... But for mine, it was different. They put it in a plate and they pulled all the turkey meat off the bone. They diced it up with a big ass baked potato and they just put it all together. And it's just. Bro, that sounds so slamming right now. Yeah. So, I mean, look them up on Instagram. You can get. Let me ask you that. Feed your eyes. But I would say barbecue is the go to. (laughs) So let me ask. After you ate that turkey leg, man, did you have to unbutton the the, 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 your your pant belt? Like, okay, let me unbutton this over here because I'm full. Dude, I I went on my off day. I made sure I didn't have to go to work. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, bro, because something like, yo, those turkey legs are huge. I've never been a turkey leg. I'm a breast man Mm -hmm. when it comes to turkey. In in, in human life, I'm an ass man. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, where the meat is, that's what I like. Yeah, brother. It's just, and I like it here because it's just so many different cultures here, man. They got all walks of life here. They got, let me tell you, when we first moved here, we was trying to find a barber for my boy. Not for me, of course. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And my wife did the research and she found this place called, uh, I think, Clipper Boys. Clipper Boys, yeah. So it was spelled with a Z. The so clipper, yeah, and then, then like boys, boys, like boys the, in the, the hood, yeah, yeah. But the S was a Z. So based on that alone, she thought it was a black barber. Oh so God! Okay. Give me the address. She's like, here, I found this barber shop. Take the boy there, see if he can get his haircut. Like, All right, <laughs> cool. So I'm driving from my house, going to this address that she gave me, and slowly but surely, the signs are changing from English to Spanish. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it went from supermarket to supermarcado. I was like, what the? Did, did, did I go to Mexico all of a sudden? So I'm just seeing, I'm just like, oh, okay, okay. And then we get there, and you know, three amigos in there with the, with the clippers, <laughs> cutting them up. And I was like, fuck it, we here, we made the journey. Get your- <laughs> I hope they did a good cut. Yeah, they did a good cut, and my son liked going there. So that's uh, great because listen, that, that's my whole joint. Because you know, they were probably Mexican, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, when it comes to Texas, it's like it's like, yeah, Mexican mostly. I mean, they got all kinds. I mean, uh, Guatemala, freaking but can you tell the, can you tell the difference? I can tell the Guatemalans because they're all short. I can tell the Cubans because they wear tight clothes. Um, <laughs> the Puerto Ricans are, is kind of mixed bag for me, but once they start talking, I can kind of tell. You talk okay. You know our dialect. Right? Yeah, so I'm I'm figuring it out because it's the place I work. I deal with them every day, so it's just like I'm figuring it out slowly. <laughs> so, but if you put them all in the lineup until they start talking, or I, I can recognize their style of dress, I was like, all right, maybe I can tell you your origin. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. I like yeah, the Guatemalans. Uh, they, they but thank tri- you. I just want to say before you go there, just want to thank you for knowing the differences. Because the only other person I know that seems to know the difference between a Mexican, a Guatemalan, a Puerto Rican, a Dominican is Fifty Cent. So he's like, there was there was this one time they interviewed him and they were talking about certain things, and I guess this this com- that topic came up. He's like, no nah, man. West Coast Mexican, like up north, the Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, you go down south to Florida, it's Cuban. You mm-hmm. know, it's like you got to understand their differences because our dialects are very different. Even mm-hmm. our looks are different. I mm-hmm. know it's hard to tell 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But, they but, had, but they're uh, there. Yeah, because they had a couple of cats that come up there look just like me. And it was like, is speaky spanny? I like, what? <laughs> I was like, hey man. So uh that I, is I true fun. Oh well, all right. So do you know any Spanish? I know Spanish to survive at work. If you drop me off That's somewhere, enough. I'm like, Ugh. okay, so that means you know every single curse word. But you can't get into conversation. <laughs> if somebody, if because you know we have some customers that come get upset and everything, so I can I, I ping the cuss words. It'd be like, all right, I didn't understand that, but I heard puta. And, I know yeah, you mad. I, I know you mad. <laughs> yeah, but excellent. Me, but me is almost like a script. They'd be like, uh, they speak Spanish. So I was like, was I say what's up just to see if, gauge the level of English. I love blood. how you brought that up when you say you speak Spanish. Just for people to know, that's where our derogatory word came from. The word speak from speaky. Whoa. Like, do you speaky? Uh, oh, so they say, oh, he's a speak when he says that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, word. And I, I changed that speak, S P I C, into Spanish person in control. That's what ah, it's called. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> I, see, I see, I see, I see. You know, but that's where the origin of, of our derogatory term term came from was that speaking word i see now yeah, like, like you know what would we call you know white people honky you know that story uh, vaguely you uh, know it's them honking the horn when they were in a black neighborhood to get somebody outside there you know hey come out the house they're honking because they want to come out the car they're a little <laughs> honky I, I, I love when you start thinking you know looking into the origins of words like that like why you know, I, used it's crazy. To, I used to even go a little deeper when I used to experiment with the green things. Um, I was just like, how did this word even happen? How are the words that are coming out of my mind? And I'm like, I'm high as fuck. And I'm looking <laughs> at my lips like, how are these words even making sense? Who made these words? <laughs> what am I, hell am I saying? My God, look, <laughs> hear me. Hear me now. I hear you, bro. <laughs> Yeah. It's crazy, right? And no, but I get you know, listen, I, I still partake in those herbal refreshments. Yes, I do. I wish I could. So but hand, I can't. <laughs> you know, and it's okay, you shouldn't. It's a bad habit. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm trying to quit to be honest, because uh, even though it's nice and relaxing to kind of rest my brain, but I saw a show the other day, it's like, why do you want to rest your brain? I was like, you know what, that shit kind of hit me. Like it, it's true. If I have all these ideas still flowing through me, whether I'm high or not, you know, why not work on the ideas and fuck, about, and fuck the high, you know what I mean? And, but of course, you know, years of, of smoking. Yeah, it almost like know, a habit. Trying like to it. stop, yeah, trying to stop cold is difficult, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So, but it's, it's, it's my journey. I will be stopping smoking. So that way, maybe I'm less in the clouds, if you will. Mm -hmm. But that'll just make me all the more dangerous. So I'm pretty sure everybody wants me to keep smoking the competition because <laughs> you don't want to sober out my God, because shit, when I'm thinking, I, I come up with stuff. And again, like I said, I have a, a great team that takes action on my ideas. Word. I mean, so, I mean, what's something, if you, if, if you can divulge, or, or what's something that you got in the pipeline or something that you think you okay, might so try to work on? Not try to work on, but being worked on. Oh, word. And uh, it threw my partner from the PCNN, Clep CX, you know, from the Critics Network. We're trying to do an OTT network, basically bring an, uh, a channel, a geek channel, live to you guys, word. offering an abundance of different types of shows, showing different perspectives amongst everything that's pop culture. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm doing my vidcast and my podcast, sure, but... All of this is a grounds for experimentation on actually creating a network uh, around our culture. You know, and that's not just to say comic culture, but, you know, pop culture. Yeah. So bring in some music, bring in film that's along the geeky verse, bring in the comics, bring in podcasts, bring in vidcasts, just talk about the journey. Because mm -hmm. I think these are things that people want to know about. So many people, like I know you mentioned earlier, a lot of people are jumping into the game of podcasting and vidcasting, but many of them were doing it without truly understanding what you have. Yeah. Like, oh, I just I just want to do it. Nah, bro, it's just not like that. You should have a mission of why you want to do this. And then obviously, you know, make sure you follow the avenue to get educated to do this. Mm -hmm. Because it is education. You will learn every single day something new. 
I know I have every single day of my journey with podcasting and vidcasting. I've learned new things, new tools, new trades, new ways to do things. It's just part of the journey. That's called growth. And don't be afraid of it. You know, that, you know I tell people this, never be afraid. With Comic Crew, I've never been afraid just to ask, what's the worst anyone could say? No, and that's about exactly. it. Exactly. And and exactly. They say no, and guess what? You try again in six months when your show's a hit. Yeah. And then they'll probably say yes. And if they say no again, then try again in a couple of months. Yeah. Because you, you know, you're do it yourself late. like Thanos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get it done, son, with a snap. No, I, I wish it was that easy with a snap, but it's not. It's a journey, yeah. and, and there's only a, a few of us that are willing. Like I say, I think we're masochists in a way where we, we like the pain, but we're building towards something that has a true value to, to our, our core geek uh, fan base. Yeah, and then no? if and if it was that easy as a snap or whatever, I mean, big and little Tony wouldn't have a job. So exactly, you know, <laughs> we want them breaking legs, but but we also want to be able to have the opportunity to grow and be able to expound upon what we do in the most positive fashion possible. Because again, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, sell our culture, sell our fandom positive, right? Mm-hmm. You know, put the most smallest books side by side with the biggest books. Because guess what? They're still books they're printed right so why shouldn't they be able to stand side by side whether you're independent or big two or premier doesn't matter you guys are all producing and you know i can't create a comic book for my life so <laughs> to everyone doing that to be honest i may be on this culture but i haven't sat down to learn how to create a comic book yeah. but i could definitely talk to you about a comic book oh yeah. you know what i mean so this is why I think that goes to back what to you what you said earlier where Try not to shit on people that are creative because they've put so much time into it. So unless you could do it, shh. <laughs> yeah, I don't even you know talk I mean? about people who in um the music biz anymore or whatever. Cause I'm like, oh man, all these little rappers is just all like, these mumbo rappers, yeah, right? But these yeah, these motherfuckers mumbo. got some hits. <laughs> yeah, I know they, they they doing it though, motherfucker. Travis Scott and all them other bastards, they got a damn McDonald's meal out of the deal, and they sell, they got tennis shoes and all kind of stuff shit you would have never heard of in the past in like 20 years ago so yeah and that's sad though because in our era those rappers definitely deserve that Mm -hmm. i mean because we had legends you know bdk krs black moon you know we had all those cats brother so it's like but can we do that now the only thing that i feel like because i mean there there are some artists out there that are good if not better than what we used to have but of I course. think the advantage that these guys have now is that they're better businessmen than our guys were back then. Oh, absolutely. And just the advantages of the social media platform exactly. to further the brand. I mean, and then they don't have, have to people- go sell out the trunk. They can just open up a little Etsy store online or some shit. And and just- I mean, 50 Cent is for me one of the greatest examples. I mean, he started off the trunks, like he said, selling those mixtapes. But then he learned about business, vitamin water, and everything else. He has a book called Hustle Hard, Hustle Smarter. Yo, yo, listen to that audio book because he reads the book. Bro, <laughs> bro, though, you laugh, but he's dropping some knowledge. Like, you know, for me, I wasn't college educated. Mm-hmm. All right. I, I graduated high school and I had to go to work, um, you know, to feed myself family. And when I hear cats like him kind of try to t- teach you the street method, that's my college though. And, and the thing that he talks about are so simple psychological things that it just makes sense. So please listen to that book. A uh, shout out to 50, because what he did there was awesome. I fell in love with this book. I was like, all right, there's a man speaking to me. Especially because this is coming from him. <laughs> you yeah. know, it, it feels so much more natural. Mm-hmm. Great book and you can get it for free on YouTube. Word, University of YouTube coming through in the clutch. Well, that's right. When I told people about that, they laughed at me. Just like you, 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 I saw you smart. You're a like fifty a book. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's good though. Trust me. When you come from the where I came from, you know, listen to somebody that can talk about the come up. You're like you, you connect much more. I understand. You know, speaking of connecting and everything like that, I appreciate you for connecting with me today and giving me your time. I'm glad that we finally got to make it happen. Finally, it took two weeks, people. You have no ideas. 
Yeah. Or even more than that, but it's all good, bro. For me to, yo, bro, thank you for allowing me space on your platform. Mm -hmm. uh, I love what you do. You real. And it, you know what I love about what you do? It's just natural conversation. It's just politicking. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, CEO to CEO. <laughs> uh, I, I, the my intro. I was just I just I just got lost in the conversation. You, you're gonna add the intro after I'll put it on later. I'll do it in post. I have yeah, my people bro. call you people. We will we'll make something happen. <laughs> yeah, but but this is wonderful. I want you want to thank you, man. Your platform is really cool. Um you really do bring a very natural vibe to conversation. So thank you. You're kicking Word. ass, brother. So thank you. I appreciate I, that. I foresee big things for you. Word, I really appreciate do. that. And, and you know, be, be, before you go, let everybody know. But they can find you on social media and what you got That's going on. Very simple, folks. Yo, you can follow me on my personal at the, at the real Al Mega everywhere. Okay. Uh, I'm good. Just like him trying to capitalize and make sure I get my name. But of course, when it comes to the branding, anything you want to know about comic books and, and comic pop culture, you know, in a written form and even on podcast form, check out comiccrusaders.com. But then, of course, also check out our podcast network. But we have a wonderful team talking about DC and one show, Marvel on another, India on another, TV and movies on others, undercovercapes.com. It's all about pop culture. And again, we do everything in a positive fashion. And I promise you, no politics, just fandom. You know, we're trying to uh, I always empower fans one at a time to, to, to love our culture sell it and again sell it in a positive manner there's enough negativity out in the world we don't want to partake in that yeah fuck that snyder cut nah, I'm, ah! <laughs> I'm looking forward to it no, so no, you know no, what no. you know I'm what gonna watch it. i'm gonna oh, watch right, it i'm right. just tired of hearing about it so i want to have this on air now because i already said if i get booker you're gonna be on with me but when the snyder cut comes out i want you to watch it Oh and yeah! I want you to come on to the Comic Crusaders podcast oh, to down. talk about that. I'm down. Fair? I'm down. Yeah, folks, talk about collaborations, son. All right, I want you on that podcast so we could dissect this movie. And hopefully, listen, whether it's positive or negative, I'm not going to try and shit on the movie, but oh, no. if it's not good, we're going to be honest about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and then I, I think it, that'll, it'll be cool to do because, once again, I have none of that knowledge of the source material per se and you seem to have enough of it so i mean that's gonna be pretty cool to, and god uh, forbid i have another team member join on because i got people that are you think i know my stuff no these guys live and read this stuff that they know the aunts and uncles of the characters i'm like jesus christ bro you okay. know extended family son uncle so clark un yeah, you know <laughs> right they, they, they know clark kent's uncles and aunts and shit not just the parents you know what i mean and cousins and second cousins, you know. I guess I could have I guess I could have figured that out if I watched Krypton, but I wouldn't have bought that <laughs> Wait, you know what? Krypton is gonna have fat, and their representation of Lobo mm -hmm. was spot on. They had a cool Lobo. So if you're a Lobo fan, you want that crazy Zarnian, that's you yeah, check out that show. It's really cool. The only thing <laughs> I know about Lobo is they had the uh Almost like the Christmas special type deal. Oh my God! You saw the fan film. That was yeah. So I funny. seen that. Yeah, I seen that. That shit was oh, hilarious. No, bro. Listen, Lobo is Deadpool before Deadpool. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. And basically, I, I I really feel that when it comes to the antics, that Lobo is a big rip off. I mean, Deadpool is a big rip on Lobo. Word. And Danny yeah. Trejo wanted to play him at one time. Oh my God, bro! Danny Trejo, you gotta see him in Seis Manos. Have you ever seen that Netflix Latino anime? It's in English, though. There's a Latino anime, and it's called Seis Manos, and Danny Trejo oh, is the yeah, big bad. Yeah. Whole martial arts. Mexican martial arts at that, bro. No, I'm not saying they're fighting with tacos and burritos. I, I, with their you hands, said right? it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. It's okay, he said it, so it's Yeah, good. I'm a Latino. I have to talk shit about my, <laughs> mi gente, all right? I say, hola, coño. Hmm. <laughs> but you oh, thought oh, it. <laughs> oh, 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 one, one, one second though. Uh, I, uh, I, I caught that. Mahinte, that's uh, my people are like me, right? Yes, my All right, people. Because cool. I, because I, because they had a website back in the day when Black Planet was uh, popular. It was another one that was uh, for uh, Latinos called Mahinte, and I was like, I wonder what the hell that mean. And here we are. It comes full circle. 
Full <laughs> circle, but you know what though? Whether we're black, Spanish, white, Asian, we're all one under the geekdom umbrella. So just, you know, yeah, you know what I mean? So keep that in mind, folks. We're all not that much different, man. Nah. We love what we love and let's celebrate what we love. You know, if we don't like it, it's okay because somebody else does. Mm -hmm. No need to fucking dismiss it or diss it. You know, if it's not you, that's what you got to say. This is not for me. Exactly. So, some people like broccoli. Some people don't. <laughs> yeah, bro. You know, listen, when I was growing up, I hated the smell of bro bro broccoli because I was like, damn, you're the dad fart again, you know? <laughs> But now that I'm older, now I could eat broccoli. I'm like, damn, you put a little butter on that shit. This is good, son. <laughs> <laughs> but as it is for every guest of the Random Realms with Rob, uh, you've been a guest. The door is always open for you to come back to promote your next big thing or just to come shoot the shit. I'd rather shoot the shit with you because when my next big thing comes, man, I want you to be a part of it too because I, 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 I love what you're doing, uh, Random Rambling Rob. Yes, this is an awesome show. The three R's, yo, bless, bro. Thank you for having me on. I feel very honored. Hello, everybody. This is Hoppy. What's up, everybody? I'm over here cooking dinner with hooks, rubs, and spices. Uh, B Rob turned me on to this stuff, and I tell you what, it's great. It's a homemade blend of the finest ingredients sourced from Texas gardens, farmers, and markets. And it's some good shit. I tell you what, try the smoke and sweetness, or you can try Hoppy's favorite, the mad cow. Which is a nice peppery slap in the face. Oh, one taste and you'll be hooked. Hooks, rubs, and spices. 